Hi friends, I am in a city called Hoi An here in Vietnam. You'll notice I don't have my pro drum shop hat on because it was getting ruined with all the sweating and the constant use. So it's a, it's like a special thing that hat for me. So I gotta take care of it a little more. Anyway, I got a new hat here in Hoi An. This city is known for tailors and clothes, you know, these, all these clothes shops everywhere. I'm, I'm here on the riverside where there's less shops and about clothes and more coffee shops and stuff. But uh, yeah, today I want to talk about artists versus craftsmen. We got a nice boat. This river at night is packed with little boats taking tourists and uh, the city is known for lanterns you know they have this lantern festival I guess on the weekends where it's just full of lanterns boats in the water well, as you can see as you can see here these types of lanterns so artists versus craftsmen what is a craftsman well, somebody that practices the craft of drumming. The craft of drumming, in my time, when I was young, what was pushed was completely different than what is pushed now. Back when I was coming up, the greatest thing was to know how to read, how to play different styles, how to survive in drumming with your skill as an overall craftsman, let's say of the instrument, your craft being the drums, music. Knowing how to read was a big deal back then. <laughs> back then I'm talking like if I was a, you know, ancient, but whatever, it feels like it because things change so fast in the music industry, criminy. Now it's just a shadow of what it was. And uh, the priorities were styles, being able to read, being able to read was a big thing. Like one of the biggest the th challenges was to come in and read a show on Broadway or whatever, right? I've done my fair share of those shows in different cities, in New York and LA and, and Las Vegas. Ugh. Las Vegas, the graveyard of musicians. <laughs> There's little boats here everywhere. Anyway, right now, it's not as crowded as at night here, so it's, it's not so bad. I'm gonna find a coffee shop to sit in and talk properly. There's a little bit of wind, too. Well, I'm sure everybody's looking at me like I'm nuts, but whatever. Craftsman, somebody who practices the craft of drumming, survives on drumming. Artist, what is an artist on drums? An artist, you know, there was a, a term. <laughs> there was a term in the theater business, acting business, whatever you want to call it, that they say it's talent. Talent refers to the actors or whoever is appearing in the shows or pieces. We call them the talent. It's really derogatory sometimes. Man, there's some construction over there. So we're gonna turn around. Oh, look at him. Hello, buddy. Hello. <laughs> Hello, buddy. An artist is someone who's not so preoccupied with the craft of drumming. That's about as simple as I can put it. The word artist, you know, in, in ancient times had connotations of being a deceiver, a liar, <laughs> funny enough. But a craftsman practices trades. 
So there is a whole lot of uh, content to talk about here. A craftsman practices his trade. It's time to find a coffee shop because I'm about to pass out. One of the big drags about this city is getting constantly harassed by salespeople. I'm sparing you guys of that. I'm walking in, in the parts that are not so busy right now. But every second, it's like, buy this, water vote, get on this, buy it. You know, it's really, it's really a bummer. It won't leave you alone anyway. Like I said, there he is. He wants to sell me a water boat ride. Artist. There was a time in China, I believe it was, when artists were considered like scummy, <laughs> like liars. There were times on this planet where artists were considered like deceivers, which in a way, you know, depending on which way you want to look at it, it's kind of true. But a craftsman practices his craft it's a different thing now I always wanted to be a craftsman when I was growing up you know that was the big thing to survive with drumming be a craftsman oh look this looks like a nice place oh closed perfect <laughs> figures <laughs> to be a craftsman was kind of an honor to be a studio musician was kind of an honor, honor badge, you know. You could go read something, get it done, one, two takes, you're done. There's a, some kind of a photo shoot going on. Those values are completely gone. Those values are wiped out. I see some of these guys, you know, on YouTube, stuff like that. Oh, look, this looks like a nice, quiet cafe here. Maybe we can, maybe we can sit here. Or should we go for one more, find a better one? It doesn't look like anybody's working there. It's hot, man. It's so hot. <laughs> Look at this. These cats wear this clo these clothes. Especially the women. The women, they, they dress like that because apparently they don't want to be white. I mean, they don't want to be dark. They want to be white, as white as possible. <sighs> Just weird because I keep telling them and you know, in my part of the world, it's coveted to be dark. You have a tan, you're like rich. <laughs> this looks okay here. Let's go here. See what I say about this town. Ordering a coffee, black, no sugar. It was a total ordeal. They're trying to push me to buy more and more. They handed me this, this menu. <laughs> trying to get me to, I said, Coffee only, ice, no sugar, like five times. Still, you know, they wanted me to push, push me to get more stuff. Yeah, whatever. Uh, I, I, I really hate this, you know. And uh, it's a symptom of the way things work in this world. I even can relate it to drumming, you know. I look at these guys with their stick tricks and double bass drums things and bouncing the sticks off the drums and whatever else as nothing but these salesmen like this they are not craftsmen they're not even artists well maybe they are artists a certain way <laughs> because they're the deceivers the great deceivers to the world of drumming and to young younger drummers thinking that that's what it's all about that's I mean, I'm, I hate to, you know, say these things because, man, I don't want to be like the the, the uh, bringer of, of bad news or something. But I think it's a really important subject because I see all these kids thinking that 
to play like uh, with stick twirling and all this stuff and I mean now more than ever they think that's what drumming is about they don't know the first thing about rhythm about styles about reading a chart they can't even read a simple chart and they waste hours and years and whatever on double bass drum leaks which any monkey can do unfortunately <laughs> you know there is a certain physicality to it if you get in the territory of Derek Roddy who is Derek Roddy is actually like a great drummer he's more like a craftsman than any of these other guys that I've seen like he can play Latin he can do other things you know <laughs> amazingly believe it or not he can I mean I did clinics with him in Canada and stuff and uh well yeah so to keep in mind you know I think to have longevity in this career is a sign of you doing something right we can also use the analogy of flavor of the month compared to whatever a legend or somebody who's been around forever a staple in our industry flavor of the month guys come and go I mean and never hear from them again or maybe you do but they just remain in the periphery of whatever a musical culture that is generally out there it's really so strange I never wanted to be flavor of the month and to a certain degree that was difficult to deal with in some and some areas of drumming like the clinic scene for example the drum companies they want flavor of the month and they want to you know juice them for all they can and then they get rid of them as opposed to let's say Jack Dejeanette who is a staple in the drumming world or Vinny or whoever else so that's the big difference I never wanted to be like a flavor of the month guy so there's, there's pros and cons you know to to everything but in the long run I think there's no there's no pros to be in flavor of the month there's so many things I want to say about this subject but I'm trying to keep it I'm trying to keep it as informational and positive as possible because uh, there, there are these videos now these reels circulating that I've seen with these kids you know the real is what it's like to be a drummer in 2024 and they have these completely ridiculous people I won't even call them drummers because they're not they're just completely ridiculous people doing a clown show an, an acrobatic show oh here's my coffee thank you very much oh that's so good thank you <laughs> Vietnamese coffee no sugar so good Oh, ice. Oh, what a relief that was. You know, I usually have my camera out like this. Vietnam is really safe. Obviously, I'm in Da Nang, you know. I'm in an area that's really safe. There are spots where, you, of course, you gotta watch your ass. But... Yeah, I see these kids, you know, with these reels, making these reels of what it's like to be a drummer in 2024, and they really have no idea because their full scope of drumming is what they see on YouTube. When I was at the collective, I was teaching at Drummers Collective, I taught there about four years or so, off and on, and the first thing guys would do after class was hit YouTube. At that time, Drummer World was super happening. Drummer World, the, the website, which is actually a, a damn good website. <laughs> uh, Bernard uh, runs it very well. It's still around, you know, but obviously with the, with the explosion of material on YouTube, I think it's hard to run one of those sites. Um, but that's what they would do. They would go straight onto YouTube and, and I, I don't understand why they wouldn't go straight to their practice room and review what we had just talked about. And that's what I did when I was in school. I'd go to class, 
eat lunch, go to live playing workshops, whatever it was, you know, rehearsal rehearsal bands, and then hit the practice room like mad, like madmen. You know. <laughs> no, no more. Hit straight to YouTube. Listen, I think YouTube is great, okay? Because it gives people access to drummers in, in, a, in a situation worldwide where you'd never be able to talk to someone before. You think before I would be able to, you know, have my own channel and reach out to people and communicate with so many people? Nah, it didn't even, wasn't even close to existing. We had dial-up modems and stuff. <laughs> So it's a great thing, but the problem is the drumming culture promotes the most banal stuff. You know, if you're if you're an algorithm chaser, you're in deep shit. You can't be an algorithm chaser. I know that some of my videos get maybe 300, 400 views, and those tend to be the best ones, <laughs> in my opinion. Obviously, there's some that get a lot of views that are really good too, but the ones that that don't the algorithm don't doesn't pick up are the ones that I'm most proud of. It's like a there's a drummer, a great drummer. Oh shit, what's his name? Uh, he's not a he's not a well known drummer like in the drumming scene, but he's well, and, you know, in the magazines and stuff like that. But uh, uh, better if I don't say his name. It just popped into my head, but maybe I shouldn't. He said, he said my best moments were in clubs at two in the morning when nobody was there. My best musical moments. You know what I mean? When the experimentation and stretching and everything you could possibly think of to be creative and you have a license to do that, when that was happening, those tend to be the most incredible music moments. The musical moments. You know, <laughs> that's how I kind of relate my YouTube videos now. Like all the things uh, that, uh, that are popular are probably like the worst ones. <laughs> Not really, but Leonard Nimoy, Leonard Nimoy, I once heard him say that popularity is but the crumbs of greatness. Now, in this situation, I agree. The algorithm, you know, is pushing things that is totally, that are totally like appealing to the lowest common denominator of intelligence and musicianship. So, you know, what else can I say? I gotta be harsh like that to some degree because if I'm, if I'm dishonest with you guys about how I feel, you know, I, I feel like I'm, I'm, not, I'm not giving you the full picture of who I am and what I, what I hope to represent in this world. People love those uh, those uh, rickshaw bicycles. I have. I'm not getting on one. I feel so bad for the guy. You know. So good. Vietnamese coffee. My God, so good. Uh, all right. So I hope I don't uh, bore you guys with these things, but I, I feel that's important to talk about because I don't want to ever give the wrong impression to, to young players about what was before and what is now and the difference between being a craftsman and an artist craftsmanship craftsmanship is what you should aim for in my humble opinion all right so that's it i'm sitting here in this uh, nice cafe by by the river here in hoi an there's a foot massage place here uh, traditional Vietnamese restaurants everywhere a shop where you can buy like hot fake Adidas shoes and stuff like that's rampant here <laughs> so all right my friends hope everybody's doing well peace out